This is a nice example of a technique to remove a soft cataract in a 33-year-old patient. First thing I like to do is use that one millimeter diamond blade. This is what creates my paracentesis. This is what we'll be using all those secondary instruments out of. I do like to use um, preservative-free lidocaine on all my cataract patients. It just makes them more comfortable for the entire procedure. Next, I like to inject a dispersive viscoelastic. My preference here is viscoat. So we're going to give ourselves a nice um, barrier of that viscoelastic. Um, this is going to protect the cornea and give us that adequate pressure against the capsule when we make our capsular axis. For my primary incision, I do a 2.2 millimeter clear cut lens from Alcon. I like to feel the metallic blade over the diamond blade for my primary incision. I do like a pseudo two-step incision, relatively flat incision. Here, we like to use a bent TB needle um, to start our rexus. So I like to kind of bring that straight down and then create my, um, or go through the sub-incisional area of that rexus first. Makes it a lot easier um, from this point forward. The rest of the rexus is relatively easy when you do the sub-incisional area first. And so here I like to use these micro utratas. I feel like they just have a nice feel. This is the titanium version. Um, and with just a couple grabs here, you can do the entire 360 degree rexus. If anything, I kind of err on a slightly larger rexus with these younger patients because my goal is going to be to burp that entire lens kind of forward instead of dividing it and doing the divide and conquer technique. And so here we're getting the FACO instrument all set up. Oh no, sorry, hydrodissection. So hydrodissection, so this is where we are going to, I'm not going to do my normal thing where I go up into the superior or inferior nasal quadrant, see a nice wave, and then go to the opposite, opposite side and kind of dislodge the lens. Here my goal is to actually um, force via hydrodissection the entire lens to either tilt up or to pop into the anterior chamber. And so here I'm going to all the different quadrants, just doing a little hydrodissection there, you can see that lens is popping um, into the anterior chamber. I'm going to give it a little push here at the back to make sure it's really kind of poking up nicely for me. And so at this point I'm going to come in and I'm going to put my FACO um, straight onto the quadrant setting. Um, and I'm going to use as little FACO energy as possible. I'm really using it more just to kind of suck up the lens with intermittent bursts of, of um, of energy to kind of bring in the rest of this lens. So here you can see with that first movement, it's flipped that entire lens into the anterior chamber. I'm gonna keep my secondary instrument posterior the entire time just to make sure that this capsule doesn't run up at me um, and get lodged in that FACO tip. And here I'm using very, very, very little, if any, FACO energy at all. These soft lenses really just suck up nicely on the quadrant setting, um, really just using more vacuum than anything else. So the lens came out real nice. We're going to move on to our um, cortex at this point. So sometimes these younger patients have a pretty sticky cortex. It really just depends on the person. So doing that little bit of extra hydrodissection in the beginning tries to really break that lens away and hopefully not leave a lot of epinucleus behind, which can sometimes be a little bit of a pain to remove. And here you can see there's a moderate amount of epinucleus, but not a ton. And with that little movement right there, we got the majority of it out. And so here, just kind of slowly taking our time, making sure we remove all this cortex. Again, keep in mind this is a younger patient. You don't want to leave anything behind because it's just going to be magnified over time. And so I really do like to kind of work everywhere but sub-incisional at first. Um, by doing everywhere else first and then moving to the sub-incisional cortex, it kind of softens everything up for you and kind of loosens that sub-incisional cortex, making it a lot easier to remove. And so I leave that for last, hoping that it's already been kind of released. And there, nicely, it's all come out. Again, keep in mind, you use so little FACO energy to kind of remove um, this, these cataracts that you need to make sure that you're um, removing all that viscoelastic. So I do a little bit of extra kind of just cleaning of the anterior sulcus, uh, anterior sulcus and anterior um, chamber area just to try to remove as much of that cohesive, vis I mean, dispersive viscoelastic right there in the beginning. I'm injecting my um, cohesive here, so the provisc, deepening that um, bag so I can slip in my lens. I think with this patient, we are going to be using, yep, a soft tech HD lens, a little bit of a bigger lens. Um, I like how soft it is. 
Um, I like these for my younger patients. They're a optically clear lens. Um, they also go in, in increments of a quarter diopter, so you can really fine tune the lens power that you want. So this is kind of my preferred lens in my younger patients, as long as they're not really hyperopic. And so we're going to be removing all this viscoelastic. We're going to spend a little extra time to make sure we get everything out of this eye because we use so little phaco energy in the beginning that there is a lot more viscoelastic left over than what you would see with a normal cataract. And so here, just making sure we get everything behind the lens just by kind of jiggling it from side to side, making sure that nothing's left behind the lens or in the anterior chamber at all. Lightly hydrating our wounds. I kind of just go straight for the roof of that main incision. That usually does an adequate job of making it nice and watertight. A little bit of a hydration to that secondary, but again, so little movement was done, we don't have to worry as much about that as we normally would. So there you go. Nice and watertight with a good pressure.